Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Turn Right Machine Works. My name is Keith, and we're getting ready to continue on the do-over project. This is a K&T spindle lock uh, ring for the spindle itself, and that's what we're working on. We're getting ready to put the slot or slice in here that lets the two ears that broke, you know, that the, they're made to come in and, and grab the tension on the spindle and that they broke at the root here now we're going to go ahead and we're going to drill um we chose a 332 i'm going to put a 332 drill at each end of that um slot so that it gives a radius uh, a radius is less stressful or stress rising area than a sharp corner and the original ones had a sharp corner in here whether that was a flaw of design overlook <coughs> or if it was ever really necessary under normal operations. We don't know the extent of these breaking other than they didn't quite break at the same time and uh, they, this, this <clears throat> the function of this collar needed to be uh, replaced and that's what we're doing right now. So I'm set up in a, with a cent, uh, center drill just so I could spot that real quick and then we'll come in here and we're gonna drill down through till we get to our aluminum on the inside there knowing we're deep enough then we'll flip it over and we'll do the other side and then we're going to be flipping up the index head here and i've been kind of ho humming around a couple couple different ways whether we're going to do k and t or do it in a bridge port and run the 1 16th slitting saw that is going to come in here and slice down through here now I will have to modify the cap on this holder here and also how much of this is actually going to be up into the spindle and to give us clearance over the top of our aluminum piece here. So I may actually have to taper this at, at, as well to rid of some of the material that might be interference from holding this as choked up as we can and the collet size up here and how close we can get in here. This is going to be riding about <clears throat> 345 thousandths off the bottom there so center line will be three-eighths of an inch around here roughly give or take a couple thousandths. Um, so I'm going to bring you in a little closer we're going to go ahead and just start going forward with this we're going to do the drill and everything else and we're going to set this up upright and we're going to take a look at what we have to do to make this work or do we scrap this and grab another means of holding the saw to go around and create that slot. All right, we're ready to go. We come out from this face here, um, 375, and we're 180 from where we want to start our slot and end our slot. So I'm gonna just go ahead and come down here and spot this and then change it out. I'm not going to go around and spot the other side and then come back. I'm just going to go ahead because I want to drill this hole and then drill the other one and then we'll be ready to pull the dividing head off the table and lay it on its back. We should see a chip difference when I go through. Yep. All right, that's aluminum there. It was just barely there, and I think uh, the drill point came through and it was spinning around on that. Okay, now we're gonna release the brake, and we're gonna roll this over. I only use the crusher wrench uh, so that I'm smooth and steady on rotating this thing around. It's not that it's hard. But instead of grabbing in real close to it, Yeah. 
and there we go lock it down all right spot it again And there we go, into the aluminum. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and we're gonna clear off a table and we're gonna lift the dividing head. We're gonna release it from the table, lay it on its back and realign it square um, after we check our travel, what we need clearance here, what we need for um, you know this this surface right here is real important that it not jam into the collet and then this right here is going to be real real close what we did is <clears throat> we went ahead and we took we took this and kind of put this into play right here this blade against where the slit is going to be and then we're looking at we're looking at the interference Right there, so we're gonna have to do something with the corner of the the cap that locks the uh, the cutter in there. All right, this is pretty cool. I I set the dividing or yeah, I mounted the dividing head down to the table, squared it up the way I want, and I haven't rotated this around yet. But I'm we're gonna bring it 90 degrees towards me. But uh, I put the holder in here. And I went ahead, this is still loose and everything else because I was just lightly touching off of this surface just by the feel of it. Brought it up roughly within a couple thousands of where it's going to be. So now we're actually looking at how much this cap's going to have to be trimmed back. And we're just going to do like a, a 30 degree angle up. And all we need to do is come down to about an eighth of an inch of it. And we should have enough to clear this hub. This inner uh, collet is about the same diameter as this down in here. And we're not going to quite go into the depth of that. And then the other the other thing is this this amount that the cap is actually going to be close to this edge right here when it's out on this outside diameter right here. So we're going to be shaving down that at an angle too to the uh, um, socket head cap screw. It won't take any strength out of holding this or compressing this, but it will give us a little more working clearance for this particular setup. So. This gives you a really good idea how close this is actually going to be and how tight it is. And I'm going to go ahead and rotate this around 90 degrees now so you'll see it out here on the actual outside of that flange. All right, and what we'll have, we'll we'll come in here, and we're just gonna we're gonna feed it by hand. We're gonna come in here, and then we're just gonna hand feed. We're just gonna walk it right around as close as we can to those two radiuses. And then I have a little trick after we get this all done to come in and and do a hand finish that the rest of that slot off. And I'll show you how I'll, I'll do that. Okay, both this angle up on the top cap here is 30 degrees, and this is also 30 degrees down here. And it definitely looks like we're going to clear. We are we we have um, touched off here and come up our 45 thousandths, and we're going to be coming over and eyeballing it uh, to our hole with the square. Um, I don't know if this is up too high, but I wanted to like make sure it's down at, at least there when we get in close we'll see but i don't think it'll be in our way at all okay so let's come around like i said i'm going to be feeding this by hand and the wall thickness of this is 430 okay and what we got to do is we got to make sure that we can come out far enough, which I'm not not quite able to come out all far enough. So we're going to come over here a little bit. We're going to move our ram out. Or I mean, we're going to move our ram back a little bit. Um, and we can go ahead and we can bring this in. 
because we need to have we can have this in a little bit more than we actually need to have it let's bring it in about two inch and a half two inches here and we won't we won't be sweating that one direction That looks pretty good. That's more than enough. All right, I think we're just about ready to go. Taking a straight edge and going across the top, and I'm just under the top of the 332 radius, uh, which is and and if I if I lay this flat going the other direction, actually, let me get uh, one of my firmer scales here. Okay, so if we take this one and. We're just as far above the bottom of the radius on the on the hole, so it looks center to me. And I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to put a little sharpen along this edge that I'm going to be cutting all the way over here to the the other hole. All right, and everything is locked down. I do have a little bit of freedom of moving on my X and Y, uh, just because I need to hand crank this in here. And I'm hoping I'm slow enough. I'm not gonna be going in any race. Also, I put a dot in here about five, half an inch in, and Just slowly moving out to where I make my mark there okay now I have a depth line on the top of that all right let's come into actually I gotta I'm gonna come over to this side for a little bit here And I've got a I've got to add a little light so I can really see what I'm doing here. kind of chose the Bridgeport also instead of the KNT because there's a lot of guys out there with just a Bridgeport and not a big horizontal that can run a slitting saw. Now what I'm going to be doing here, my first plunge in, I'm going to try to go in as deep as I can right next to and, and come right into the hole that I drilled on the outside surface I might take this in a little bit I might come in here come over come in come over come in so I'm not sweeping such a great arc when I'm right next to that you know I'm about a quarter inch from being all the way the depth in
We got a lot of clearance. Underneath still. I'm about 3 sixteenths of being into my blue line. Knowing that I'll be into the aluminum at that time. Alright, I'm just starting to come up to the edge of my hole here. Okay, I'm going to feed the table back somewhat now. Now I'm going to come in some more. I'm trying to make it as cut as close as possible. Checking my clearance underneath there. Okay, now I'm gonna feed the table back and then and then uh, just make it come into my next plunge. I'm just gonna like move like a quarter inch or so at a time. Okay, come back out some more. All right, come in. Just walking it around. The underside of the uh, holder is the determining factor so far. All right, that, that gives you a view from the front of the mill because I'm still standing over here on the uh, port side. Okay, just kind of walking it around. It actually, it's cutting pretty smooth. Knock on wood.
We're almost halfway where we'll be feeding in instead of out. Okay, we gotta reposition our light again. I just got it in as close as as close as I can. That line gets dusty on the top there. And we're doing good. Okay, now I'm gonna start uh, Crank it from the other side, so I'm gonna move you slightly back to this side all right, I brought over a magnet and We're picking up we're picking up some of these chips, but we're not picking them all up. So some of those are aluminum and uh, That's what I was really hoping that we are getting that depth in there and we can also take our scale here And uh, we got some some chips in there, but we can wiggle it in, and we're almost a half an inch deep there, and we know that we're like 430 or so. All right, I'm gonna continue cranking it in around from this side now. Bring you in a little closer.
Okay, we're about a quarter inch away from our hole over here. There we go. Gotta find some way to keep that down there. All right. Okay, we're coming into the edge of the hole right here. Okay, I like that. All right, we're just coming out now. See if we can dig some of this out uh, because they're just that's where the chips were just fed back in with the roller there. And uh, we'll see if we can clear that out and get some definite uh, depths in there, making sure that we are 100% on there before we move from this setup. Okay, we went ahead and we grabbed our plexiglass cutter because we knew this blade was thin enough in here, and we went ahead and pulled all the chips out of there. Then we shine the light in there and we can actually see little facets. I don't know if my little camera would get in there and actually see that. Um, I'm not going to bother because I'm also doing the depth uh, check. And the width or depth of this is like 420. And I'm getting, I have a solid half an inch. Let me bring you in here. Okay, I have a solid 500 thousandths all the way around here. All right, we're going to take it out of the bridge port now and we're going to take it on over to the K&T because I'm going to want to split this with a wheel cutter over in the K&T. Let me take you on over there and let's get that done. Mm -hmm. 